In today's video, we will be going through American Horror Story, pilot is the first episode of the first season. Let's get started. In 1978, two red-headed twin boys are looking to vandalize a house with baseball bats. They arrive on the property and encounter Adelaide Langdon outside, who warns them not to enter the house. She tells them that they will die there. The boys brush off this warning and proceed to enter the house. They work their way through the room smashing wooden blasts. After descending to the basement, they find a number of specimen jars containing animal remains and human fetuses, as well as bloody surgical tools. Brian complains about the smell and starts to climb back up the stairs. He pauses when he realizes that his brother Troy has gone silent. Brian walks back downstairs to find Troy. He is gasping for air, his throat slit by the ghost. In 2010, recently miscarriage Vivian Harmon is undergoing an examination. By her obstetrician gynecologist doctor is trying to convince her to take hormones to recover her body. But she refuses it explaining to him suspicion that without knowing the side effect might be a symptom of depression and alludes to her recent miscarriage baby. Vivian returns home and is alarmed by noises coming from upstairs believing that there is an intruder she dials 911. Vivian arms herself with a kitchen knife and sneaks upstairs and discovers that her husband psychiatrist Ben is having an affair with one of his students. In 2011 the Harmon family, Ben, Vivian, Violet, and their dog Haley head to Los Angeles, California for a fresh start and arrive at the same house where the twins were killed decades earlier. While the realtor Marcy relays some of the house's history, Haley starts barking uncontrollably at the basement door, and Vivian instructs Violet to check on her. Marcy discloses that the previous owners were a gay couple, who restored the house to its original grandeur, died during a murder-suicide in the basement intriguing Violet. The Harmon unpack and move in, but Ben and Vivian are continuing to have marital problems. Violet is struggling to adjust to her new high school, and is regularly harassed by a trio of older classmates led by Leah. After she is caught smoking, Vivian receives a surprise visit from her intrusive next-door neighbor Adelaide and her mother Constance, who gives her a housewarming gift of sage. While burning it, Vivian finds a bondage suit hanging from the attic ceiling. She asks Ben to get rid of it. Ben begins sessions with Tate Langdon, a young man with vivid fantasies about killing his classmates. Oddly in his fantasies, he kills the classmates he likes. Violet begins self-harming and Tate befriends her. Ben begins sleepwalking while he's nude and begins to hear voices. He lights the fireplace downstairs and is discovered by Vivian. Vivian is hanging laundry when she is approached by Moira, whom she sees as an older woman in a traditional French maid's uniform, and who was the housekeeper for the previous owners. Moira's intimate knowledge of the house on how to care for it, and its history leads Vivian to hire Moira as a housekeeper. Ben meets Moira in the kitchen and he perceives her as a seductive young woman in a much more revealing version of the same attire. Ben expresses concern about Tate, but is confident he can be treated. Unbeknownst to Ben, Tate has since formed a strong bond with Violet, and Ben is furious when he discovers them and demands that he leave. Ben walks in on Moira masturbating in a guest room. In his bedroom, he himself masturbates by a window and starts to cry. He is startled by a man shouting and looks down to discover he is being watched by a man with severe facial scarring. Standing on the front lawn, Ben pursues the man but does not catch up to him. Vivian is unloading groceries in the kitchen and finds the cabinet and refrigerator doors have suddenly opened on their own. Adelaide giggles from another room and sees the twins emerge behind an unaware Vivian. Vivian asks Adelaide to stop entering the house uninvited and makes sure that they are clear she should never come into the house uninvited again. Adelaide says okay and tries to touch Haley, before leaving who bites at her angering her. Constance threatens to harm Vivian if she ever touches her again. Over the phone, Ben tries to report Tate but is unsuccessful, as he does not have correct and complete information on Tate's background, and is then distracted by Moira they are discovered by Violet. While restoring the music room, Ben attempts to seduce Vivian. After she uncovers devil-themed paintings, they argue over her inability to forgive Ben for cheating and reconciling through making love for the first time in almost a year. Later that night, as Vivian prepares for bed, she sees a figure in the doorway in the rubber suit from the attic believing it to be Ben, unaware that Ben is sleepwalking downstairs. Vivian and the man have intercourse, and Ben is saved by Constance from burning himself on the stove while sleepwalking. Tate and Violet plan to scare Leah after a physical altercation at school. Violet lures Leah into the basement of her house with the promise of drugs. Tate is waiting there and as Violet watches Leah is attacked by the ghost. Leah runs away and her face deeply cut after this incident. 
Violet argues that Tate took the prank too far and orders him to leave. While out on a morning job, Ben is followed by the burnt man, who introduces himself as Larry Harvey, a previous owner of the house. Larry claims to be on release from prison due to a terminal and inoperable brain cancer and was apprehended after incinerating his family. He was left with burn scars on over 70% of his body as a result, compelled by the same whispering voices that Ben has been hearing. Ben threatens to commit Larry if he does not leave his family alone. Mora catches Constance going through Vivian's jewelry box, and Constance responds by threatening Moira that she'll kill her again, which means Moira is a ghost. Vivian comes home and tells a joyous Ben that she is pregnant. Episode 1 ends here. Home Invasion is the second episode of the first season. Let's get started. In 1968, three young women are leaving the house to attend a concert, while fellow roommates Maria and Gladys stay behind. Shortly after they leave, a man with blood on his forehead arrives outside and asks for help. Maria lets him in, and while trying to clean his wound, she discovers that he is not injured. That man strikes Maria with a nearby bowl, knocking her unconscious. He drags Gladys upstairs chanting Fatty Patty and drowns her in the bathtub. That man tells Maria to put on a nurse's uniform. Maria begged for mercy and told him that she is a virgin. He binds her arms and feet and leaves her lying on the sofa. Maria prays for help and the man stabs her repeatedly in the back. In 2011, Ben is in a session with Tate, who reveals he has sexual fantasies about Ben's daughter Violet. After Ben's cell phone begins ringing, and he grows irate as the caller continues harassing him and reveals that it's his student who is pregnant now. At a skate park, Violet sympathizes with Lean. Lean explains that she hasn't told anyone about what happened, and as a result, her hair has begun turning white out of fear. Tate begins watching Violet as she sleeps. Then the burglar alarm suddenly goes starts ringing, causing Ben and Vivian to wake up. Ben off the alarm and discover the front door has been opened. He discovers Adelaide giggling downstairs kneeling on the floor and he sends her home through a door in the basement ben walks back upstairs unaware of a red ball rolling across the floor from adelaide's playmate vivian feels that something is wrong with the baby due to a lack of sickness but ben thinks she is paranoid given her last pregnancy ben meets with a new client named bianca bianca tells ben her dreams of being bisected by a malfunctioning elevator and informs him of his home's inclusion in the eternal darkness to her after the session, Ben tries to reach Tate's mother to inform her that he can no longer continue his sessions with Tate. Due to his interference with Violet, Bianca returns unexpectedly and Ben escorts her out. In Langdon's kitchen, Constance is baking cupcakes and has Adelaide spit in the batter as she mixes in syrup of Ipecac, explaining the effects of severe stomach upset and possible internal bleeding. In mourning while Ben is jogging crying and guilty thinking of his affair with Hayden, the same pregnant woman on the phone and the student that Ben had an affair with prior to moving to Los Angeles. Ben encounters Larry, who advises that Ben lie about his upcoming trip to see Hayden. Constance brings the cupcakes as a peace offering for Violet and detects that Vivian is pregnant. Constance reveals that she herself has had four children, three of which were born with defects. The remaining son was physically perfect, but Constance lost him to other things. She insists that Vivian's baby is fine and also reveals that Mora once worked for her. Vivian offers to have a girl's night with Violet, but she declines and goes on to inform her that she knows Vivian is pregnant. Violet tells her mom that if she thinks having a baby will save her marriage, then she is wrong. Vivian leaves the room hurt by Violet's comments. Ben visits Hayden who claims she is fine and that she wants him there for support while she has an abortion the next day. Back at the house, a woman is at the door. Vivian sees through the peephole that Fiona's scalp is bloody and she demands help but a suspicious Vivian does not let her in. Vivian attempts to call the police, but her phone is nowhere to be found. The intruder enters Violet's room as she searches for her phone to call 911. Vivian threatens the masked woman through the door, but a third intruder is already behind her. Downstairs, the three intruders, Bianca, Fiona, and a man named Dallas unmasked themselves. In front of a captive Vivian and Violet, they intend to reenact the 1968 murders of Gladys and Maria and have brought the bowl that Franklin had used. Violet is assigned to play the role of Gladys and be drowned in the tub upstairs, but she resists and manages to briefly escape to the kitchen where she is found by Tate. Tate tells her that she must get the intruders to the basement where they will be dealt with. In the music room, a bound Vivian spies Adelaide behind him and suddenly tries to tell her to get help. 
Her captor turns, but does not see Adelaide. Upstairs Fiona is filling the tub, while Violet is forced to dress in the nurse's garb. Bianca enters while eating the toxic cupcake. She starts to feel the effects immediately and backs out. Heading for a bathroom, Violet fails Fiona's plans, informing her that the tub used in the drowning was moved to the basement in a remodel. Constance is at home, fondling a shirtless young man. Adelaide knocks on the door, warning Constance about the intruders next door. Adelaide grows insistent, and Constance locks her in a closet surrounded by mirrors, leaving a screaming Adelaide alone inside. Bianca walks back to the bathroom after throwing up, where Tate strikes her in the abdomen with an axe. Dallas cuts Vivian's bonds, intending for her to dress in the nurse uniform. She throws it in his face, and as they wrestle Vivian finds the historic ashtray and hits him on the head. She races upstairs expecting to find Violet, but only sees the trail of blood. Vivian and Violet meet on the ground floor and escape from the house, getting Constance's attention. The ghostly Maria leads Dallas downstairs. He finds Fiona with her throat slit, beside a filled tub flanked by Maria and Gladys. At the clinic, Hayden is called in for a procedure. Meantime, Ben's phone vibrates and he sees that he has missed 13 calls. Constance arrives in the basement to join Tate and Moira as they stand in front of the murdered bodies of Fiona and Dallas. Tate does not claim responsibility, and the trio agrees that they must get rid of the bodies to protect the family. If Constance wishes for Ben to continue treating Tate, the police question Ben and Vivian. Ben claims he was seeing a patient, and the police show him the file they have on Bianca, who was using the therapy sessions to case the house. The police located her, finding her practically cut in half six blocks away. Since the other two attackers are missing, the police assume that they pulled a copycat of the Black Dahlia on her for her reluctance to commit the murders given their interests. After the police leave, Ben asks Violet about her claim that Tate helped her escape and how he got into the house. Violet angry with Ben and is happy that Tate was there when Ben was not. She also goes on to tell Vivian that she was very brave. Ben points out to Vivian that he is home now, but she says that he is not, as she plans on selling the house. Episode 2 ends here. Murder House is the third episode of the first season. Let's get started. In 1983, the young Moira is the maid of the house and is cleaning the main bedroom when a drunken man enters the room and ropes her. After resisting his advances, he attempts to bribe her with the offer of a car. She continues to deny him, and he advances on her, pinning her to the bed to rape her. Constance enters the room holding a gun and catches them in the act. She shoots a warning shot through the window, then shoots Moira through her eye. Constance turns to the man and points her gun at him. She exclaims that she has loved him since she was 16. The man is her husband, Hugo. She then shoots him three times in the chest and kills him. In 2011, Ben and Vivian are arguing as they are unable to move out of the house until it is sold. They agree to rent an apartment but Ben must continue to see his clients at the house. Vivian has tea with Marcy, the realtor who sold them the house. Marcy tells Vivian stories of the former owners and alludes to the fireplace poker being used in their sexual habits. Vivian interjects that they need to put the house on the market and sell it without a fiscal loss. Marcy debates the possibility of this. Given the market, Vivian counters that Marcy should have told them more about the history of the house, but Marcy defends that she was under no legal obligations to reveal any more information about deaths on the premises earlier than the last three years. Vivian claims she will sue Marcy for gross criminal negligence if she does not try to sell the house. In another room, Constance is once again caught stealing silverware by Moira. Moira clearly hates Constance, but Constance rebukes her for being a terrible maid and a thief of biblical proportions, alluding to Moira's affair with Hugo. Constance hopes that Moira will eventually be accused of stealing the Harmon's things and that they will fire her. Moira breaks down furious with Constance and frustrated that she is bound to the house and unable to move on. Constance retorts repeatedly that Moira put herself in that situation. Ben's new patient is Sally Freeman, a woman whose husband is leaving her because he feels she is boring. Despite her best efforts, Ben is distracted and zones out during the session, regaining consciousness in the backyard. His hands bloody, standing on a patch of worn earth. He washes the blood from his hands and enters to see more sponging blood off the hallway floor. She claims that she didn't see anything. Moira has already cleaned his office so that it is ready and presentable for his next patient. Ben is missing his digital recorder of the session with Sally Freeman, 
He frantically searches for it desperate to find it and discover what had happened during that session. Moro once again distracts him, trying to seduce him. She becomes increasingly aggressive and Ben has had enough. He grabs her and yells that she is fired. Vivian walks in perplexed by Ben's yelling. In the kitchen, Ben defends his case for firing Moira, saying her continued attempts at seduction are unacceptable. Vivian perceives Moira as an older woman, is shocked and confused. Suddenly Moira explains that, while men objectify women and see what they want to see, women instead see into the soul of a person. Moira assures them that she is willing to forget the incident and carry on with her job. Vivian contemplates whether to fire her, but Moira bites back saying that she deserves respect and that she should not be tossed away like trash. Moira threatens to press charges if Ben lays a hand on her again or tries to fire her without just cause. Ben tries to press the point with Vivian, but they view the situation very differently. Vivian thinks Ben's indiscretion has left him very messed up paranoid and guilty. She wants to avoid any additional lawsuits from Moira as they try to leave the house. Outside, Vivian is cutting the rose bushes when she hears the tour guide for the Eternal Darkness tour, announcing her house as the gem of Midtown. Ben finds Violet outside smoking, despite her concealment. He knows and claims he is not there to bust her. He is going easy on her due to her recent trauma. During the home invasion, he offers to find her a therapist if she wants to discuss the incident. As he walks away, Tate, who was hiding behind a pillar, emerges. He tells her she is lucky to have a caring dad. Ben once again confronts Moira about his missing tape recorder. She attempts to seduce him again and says its absence is hopefully not a problem as his next patient is in his office. Confused since he has no other patient scheduled, then goes to his office. The unexpected visitor is Hayden. She tells Ben that she did not have the abortion and is instead moving to Los Angeles, demanding financial support for their alleged baby. She also wants active participation from Ben but the conversation is cut short by Detective Jack, who is at the door. Hayden leaves, making plans to meet up with Ben the next day. Ben thinks the detective is there because of the home invasion, but he is from the missing person division and is there regarding Sally Freeman. Her husband has reported that she did not return home, which leaves Ben as the last person to have contact with her before her disappearance. In 1976, Stan is working as a guide on the Eternal Darkness tour. He informs his tour bus that the film actor Sal Minio was knifed to death in the Los Angeles alleyway by a man he thought was cruising him for a sexual hookup. In 2011, the tour concludes with a stop outside the murder house. Vivian is sitting incognito at the tour bus and she listens to a history unknown to her about her own home. 1922 to 1926, Stan relays that in 1922, Charles Montgomery was a surgeon addicted to ether who grafted different body parts from separate species unto each other. His Philadelphian socialite wife, Nora, was disappointed by the austerity. They must practice from their lack of funds. In 1925, their son cries as they eat dinner and argue, and Nora orders Daphne, their servant, to take the child away. Nora states that bill collectors have come once again, and she will have none of it. She demands Charles C., a young pregnant starlet named Dorothy Hudson, and perform an abortion on her. Dorothy gives Nora $60, and Nora drugs her and ushers her into the basement. He performs at least two dozen other illegal abortions by 1926. In 2011, Stan is about to describe the grand finale of 1926, but Vivian, seeing blood on her pants, runs to the house and interrupts the tour. At the doctor's office, Ben and Vivian are told that the blood is benign spotting and that it is not a miscarriage. Stress is potentially dangerous to the pregnancy and the doctor chastises them for thinking about moving during Vivian's pregnancy as it is one of the most stressful times in a person's life. Ben is suddenly overcome by flashbacks regarding his affair with Hayden and passes out. Constance is walking a dog and waves to Tate, who is standing in a window of the house. Tate does not acknowledge her, which leaves her confused, observing this while putting the for sale sign back up. Marcy is perplexed as well, as she did not see Tate at all. Constance makes a snide remark to Marcy, wishing her luck in selling the house. Ben is jogging and encounters Larry. Larry solicits $1,000 for headshots, but Ben refuses. Ben tears his office apart, looking for the recorder and blacks out again. This time he is awoken by Constance, lying in the same spot in the yard as before, again with a shovel. 
He begins digging up the spot, where he has awoken several times. Constance claims that the soil will not support plants due to pesticides, and suggests he build a gazebo and patio instead. Mora watches anxiously from above. Vivian is examining classified ads for a new apartment. When the doorbell rings, wary given the home invasion, Vivian approaches the door, peering through the peephole. She sees Nora, who claims she has an appointment to look at the house, with a candlestick as a potential weapon behind her back. Vivian lets her in. Nora marvels at the wooden and glass fixtures, which have been restored to their original grandeur. That is how they were when she lived in the house. Upon entering the kitchen, Nora is horrified at the modern appliances. Vivian mentions that she is pregnant, which piques Nora's interest. Vivian asks Nora if she would like tea, and Nora accepts. As Vivian turns around to retrieve the tea she was preparing, she realizes that Nora has vanished. The detective returns to tell Ben that they have found his missing patient Sally Freeman. Two days earlier she had overdosed in a suicide attempt and put herself into a coma. Without any sort of identification, she had Ben's recorder on her and the details from Ben's blackout during the session are played. Sally was uncharacteristically violent, trying to get Ben's attention and slashed her wrists with his letter opener. The detective thinks Ben's lack of action made him culpable, if not legally accountable for the crime. Vivian and Violet tour an apartment for rent. Violet accuses her parents of running away from their problems, rather than facing them, and thinks the house is a source of strength. Ben receives a call from Vivian's doctor, who tested his blood after he passed out in her office. His blood shows traces that he's been drugged with laudanum, an archaic compound that causes memory loss. He realizes Moira has been spiking his coffee with it. Moira tells him to prove it when he confronts her. Hayden shows up at the door, having been stood up during the course of the day's events. She is furious wanting to tell everything Vivian, who is not yet home. Ben talks her down from her outburst, and she agrees to leave. As she exits, Larry comes up behind her and hits her over the head with a shovel. Ben goes into hysterics, asking Larry what he has done, and Larry explains that he was trying to save Ben from having to kill her himself, as it would have been the only way to solve his problems. Larry convinces Ben not to call the police, and that he will take care of the body. Larry notices the hole that Ben has been digging, and digs deeper as Ben recovers. At the bottom of the hole are Moira's remains. Larry drags Hayden's corpse on top and fills the hole. Now you're stuck here forever. Later Ben takes Constance's advice to cover the hole with a gazebo, watching upstairs with a horrified Moira. Constance tells her she's now stuck at the house forever. Ben and Vivian enjoy the completed gazebo, drinks in hand, though Vivian has no knowledge of the two corpses buried beneath it. That night as Vivian sleeps, Nora pays her a visit, hovering her hand over Vivian's stomach. Episode 3 ends here. Halloween Part 1 is the fourth episode of the first season. Let's get started. In 2010, Chad Warwick is lighting candles and carving pumpkins in preparation for a Halloween party that is supposed to make people interested in buying the house, which he and his partner had bought to fix and then sell it at a profit. Chad confronts his partner Patrick about having sex with his trainer at the gym, which Patrick concedes to doing. They fight about the passion being gone from their relationship and that they are stuck in the house due to finances tied up with the restoration. After Patrick leaves, Chad sees Rubberman and mistakes him for Patrick. An angry Rubberman drowns Chad in the apple bucket and turns around to find Patrick standing in a cowboy costume. In 2011, Ben, Vivian, and Marcy discuss strategies for selling the house. Marcy wants to include fluffers, specialists paid to style up the house, to drive more lookers. Vivian agrees that the house has an image problem. Since they're on the Eternal Darkness tour, Marcy hires a gay man. Travis is reading about Halloween's origins in Adelaide. Constance seems frustrated with him and sends him to pick up groceries and cigarettes. Adelaide can read, but has been telling Travis that she can't. Constance thinks Adelaide is vying for Travis's affections and warns her that, after 30 years of sacrificing for Adelaide, she is not going to share the men in her life with her. Larry shows up to extort money from Ben for killing and burying Hayden. Ben sends him away, as he has a patient who ends up being Tate, who did not transition to the new therapist. Ben set up for him Dr. Goldman. Ben thanks him for helping during the home invasion, but wants an explanation as to why he was there. Tate lies, but Ben still says, the Tate cannot be seen as a patient at the house because of the continued boundary issues. The tearful and contrite Tate agrees, and they agree to meet for coffee in a park. 
the security officer describes the new security system to Vivian. Moira is carving pumpkins which she says Marcy brought. Moira requests Halloween off so that she can visit her mother. Vivian takes the pumpkins outside and sees Chad and Patrick discussing the rose bushes, mistaking them for Marcy's fluffers. Vivian brings them inside. Ben, Vivian, Chad, and Patrick are carving pumpkins. The ghosts are playing the part of the fluffers and continue to bicker. Chad insists the gazebo will not help them sell the house and should be replaced after Halloween with an organic garden. Ben cuts himself accidentally with the knife and Patrick who is an EMT volunteers to help. After he does so in the bathroom, Patrick fondles and tries to seduce Ben with a blowjob, but Ben declines. Vivian and Chad discuss Patrick's indiscretions as they prepare more decorations. Chad says he discovered the truth after reviewing the cell phone records, which could not be erased the same way as text messages. Upstairs, Adelaide scares Violet, grabbing her from underneath the bed. Adelaide wants Violet to dress her up as a pretty girl. Adelaide asks if she is Tate's girlfriend and also as she is a virgin. Adelaide declines to reveal her age, citing Constance, but tells Violet that she is not a virgin. Adelaide is overjoyed by the makeover. Violet chides Adelaide, saying she can't come over anymore, but Adelaide insists that all of her friends are here. Constance chases Adelaide around the kitchen, insisting that she take off the makeup, citing their reputation. Adelaide refuses to comply. Violet looks for Tate in the basement and is scared by him as he is wearing the rubber man suit. They use an Ouija board to contact Charles Montgomery. Violet wants to know what Tate did to the intruders in the basement. He repeats that it wasn't him as he had help. Tate tells her the story of Charles Montgomery in his abortion clinic. He adds that Nora received a threatening phone call from an angry father of an aborted child. He kidnapped their baby and the police returned the dismembered corpse in jars. Nora wanted to bury the child in the lace christening dress but Charles stitched the remains together. Tate insists that the resulting entity, the ghost still lives there in the basement. Voilet does not believe him. Voilet insists that she and Tate should have a real date, away from the house, and Tate agrees to do. So the following day, Ben meets Tate at a playground. Ben discloses his troubled childhood to Tate, while uncharacteristically smoking a cigarette. He says that Tate reminds him of himself at his age, and how lucky and surprising it was that he was able to get through it with a wonderful family. Constance finds Adelaide in bed, as Adelaide does not want to trick or treat. Constance has capitulated and will let her go as a pretty girl. While wearing a vinyl mask, Ben is preparing his costume as a vampire, and Vivian is dressed as a witch. She confronts him about Hayden, having examined the phone bills and found her contacts. Ben claims that he has had minimal contact with her and that he didn't see her in Boston. He says she will not be calling back, Vivian's cell phone rings, and it's Hayden's number. Vivian says she will call her back. Downstairs, Chad continues to decorate the house. He frowns at Vivian's choice, and it's gaudy symbolism to new potential home buyers, and the cheesiness of Ben's outfit. Chad freaks out about the wrong Apple choice, leading to Chad's insistence that the Harmons should leave. Vivian demands they leave at once. As Chad and Patrick are about to walk out the front door, they catch a glimpse of the rubber man. Terrified, they run out of the back. Vivian has had enough of Ben's lies and says that he should leave as well. Immediately, she clutches her belly, feeling something wrong with the baby. Ben and Vivian rush to the hospital, leaving Voilet behind and instructing her not to answer the door under any circumstances. Voilet reads upstairs while her iPod plays loudly, having set out a candy dish. She doesn't hear Adelaide ringing the doorbell, wanting Voilet to see her pretty girl mask and costume. She follows a group of insulting young women wanting to fit in with them, and does not see the oncoming car that hits her as she crosses. The emergency room doctor finally sees Ben and Vivian. During an ultrasound examination, the doctor initially questions the pregnancy timeline, as the baby is much larger than it should be at eight weeks. Peering further, the doctor sees something and suddenly collapses to the floor. Constance rushes to find Adelaide being attended to by EMTs. Constance defies the EMTs who are trying to load Adelaide into the ambulance and drags her to the lawn of the Harmon's house, insisting that she will be with her friends. She does not reach the lawn in time. Mora walks the hallways of a long-term care facility, finding her comatose mother Molly on a respirator. Mora feels guilty that she hasn't been there for her and resolves to set her free. Mora unhooks the respirator and her mother dies. Molly's ghost bids that Mora should come with her, but Mora cries that she can't. 
Larry is furiously pounding on the door and ringing the bell, demanding that Ben give him his thousand dollars. He scares away oncoming trick-or-treaters. Violet calls Ben, while Larry menaces her through the door. Over her shoulder, rubber man frames the doorway. When Ben and Vivian arrive home, they call after a missing Violet. There's a knock at the door and Ben answers. It is a ghoulish Hayden smirking. Ben slams the door in her face. Episode 4 ends here. Halloween Part 2 is the fifth episode of the first season. Let's get started. Larry is still banging at the door and scaring away trick-or-treaters. Out of the corner of her eye, Violet catches a glimpse of the rubber man. When she turns, he vanishes without a trace. She heads upstairs to her room, and an arm reaches out from under the bed, but she pulls away before it can touch her. As she hears rocks softly against her window, it's Tate outside, who gives her a rose painted black and takes her to the beach for their date. Ben and Vivian arrive home to the screaming alarm. There's a knock at the door and Ben answers it. Seeing that it's Hayden, he slams the door on her face and is in complete disbelief. Violet calls Vivian, saying she's out with her friends and is safe. In reality, she is with Tate at the lifeguard station on the beach. Ben arms himself allegedly from the vandals outside. Vivian talks him down and then tells Ben she wants him to move out the next day. She states that she wants to take a bath and as she walks away, Ben angrily affirms that he is not giving up on their family. Ben goes outside to look for Hayden and grabs a shovel. Larry sneaks up behind him, saying that he wants his money. Ben responds by hitting him in the face with the shovel. He continues to throw Larry around, demanding to know where Hayden is. Larry insists Hayden is under the gazebo. Ben believes that Larry and Hayden are working together to blackmail him, but Larry realizes that Ben is unaware. The spirits of those who die on the property dwell in the house. Larry laughs still being beaten about how naive Ben is about the situation. Larry taunts Ben begging for Ben to kill him so that he can haunt him from the dead. But Ben settles for threatening Larry and telling him never to return. Luke the heirloom security officer arrives, questioning Vivian about the triggered alarm. Vivian covers, saying that Violet must have set it off and also says the porch vandalism must have been neighborhood kids. The officer leaves after being assured that the Harmons feel safer with him around on the beach, Tate and Violet begin making out. Violet offers for Tate to take her virginity, but Tate declines, saying that he feels something deeper for her. He apparently does not have an erection and apologizes, saying that this has never happened to him before. Violet jokingly asks him if he's gay. He denies this and says that he believes that the medication that her father prescribed him is causing his erectile problem. Offended Violet gets up to leave, but he asks her not to go. Tate describes how this place used to be his refuge from the stresses of high school and some high school students approach the couple with gory injuries. It turns out that they are angry with Tate, though he claims not to recognize them. Tate and Violet leave. Hayden calls Vivian as she prepares her bath. Hayden taunts Vivian and leaves a note in the steam on the bathroom mirror, demanding that Vivian ask Ben about Boston. Vivian freaks out about Hayden being in the house. Ben argues with her about calling the police citing the public reaction to 10 cop cars outside the murder house. In actuality, Ben grabs a kitchen knife and goes looking for Hayden in the basement. He finds her and begs her to leave. Ben still believes that she and Larry are extorting him. Hayden begins to cough up bloody internals, realizing that she is rotting inside, but not initially knowing why. She catches up to Ben, then berates him for her grave and treatment. Ben is still frustrated and confused about the situation until Larry knocks him unconscious with the shovel. Larry tries to apologize to Hayden for what happened, but she dismisses him, saying she'll deal with him later. Larry offers his arson talents to take care of Vivian. Chad is tearing up the yard decorations. Vivian confronts him, and he blames her for ruining his evening with Patrick. He speculates as to the infidelities. Patrick has been indulging during the evening. Vivian threatens to call her security company, but Chad warns her that no one can protect her yelling at her to get out of his house. Hayden relaxes in the tub upstairs while Vivian searches for Ben. Haley begins barking and Vivian presses the panic alarm. Investigating, she finds a bathroom downstairs on fire. Back at home, Violet asks Tate about his pursuers. He claims again not to know them. The students followed the couple to the murder house. Hayden calls and taunts Vivian on the phone once more, hinting that she is in the kitchen with Haley. This prompts Vivian to look for her armed with a golf club. Cautiously, Vivian looks around for the missing dog. She is startled when something red explodes inside the microwave. On the porch, the teenagers are waiting for Tate. 
Violet tries to menace them, but they taunt her instead. They discover that Violet is unaware as to why they are so angry with Tate, opening fire on them in school killing the mold. Tate tries to protect Violet by leading the students on a chase away from the house. Violet calls the police, but her call is interrupted by Constance, who blames Violet for Adelaide's death. Once again, Vivian presses the panic button. She is relieved that the noise in the closet is a trapped Haley. Hayden stands at the bedroom door, saying that she won't leave until Vivian is aware of Ben's indiscretions, including her murder and pregnancy. Vivian thinks that Hayden is referring to Vivian's unborn child, which Hayden was unaware of. Hayden blames Ben's nonchalance about her abortion on Vivian being pregnant and advances towards her with a large shard of glass, intent on cutting out Vivian's fetus. Meanwhile, Larry is saturating the dining room with fuel until stopped by Chad who confronts him. Ben awakens bound with rope in the basement. Nora Montgomery stands over him, chastising him for failing to protect his family and unborn child, then cuts his bonds. He reaches the bedroom in time to interrupt the struggling Vivian and Hayden. Vivian at Hayden's urging asks Ben about Boston. Ben admits that he lied, not only about the recent visit, but about continuing his affair with Hayden. After Vivian caught them, vindicated and mission fulfilled, Hayden drops the shard of glass. Luke enters and removes Hayden as an intruder. Constance is sitting in her kitchen with Violet. Constance recounts visiting Adelaide in the morgue. In the morgue drawer, Constance applies makeup to Adelaide's corpse, calling her a pretty girl. Constance does not truly blame Violet and allows her to have one of her cigarettes. Constance discloses that Tate is one of her children. She makes Violet promise not to reveal Adelaide's death to Tate, saying that it will crush him emotionally. Constance praises Violet's emotional fortitude and speculates that it may be what attracts him. The student's ghosts catch up to Tate, but he does not seem to realize they are ghosts. They confront him about his actions and want to know why he selected them for death. He starts to realize that his school shooting fantasies actually occurred, but he still does not remember. As the sun begins to rise, the ghosts whose souls are trapped within the house return including Hayden, who vanishes from the back seat of Luke's car. Ben packs his things into a suitcase. He kisses Vivian goodbye. Although she cannot bear to look at him, he leaves the house without a word. Episode 5 ends here. Piggy Piggy is the sixth episode of the first season. Let's get started. In 1994, the shooter has opened fire at Westfield High. Kevin Gidman's student who survived the initial onslaught flees to the library and informed his fellow students in the library that there is a gunman in the halls. The students barricade the door and hide in various places around the library. The door handles rattle, but the barricade holds. The students don't move and listen to the gunman's footsteps. Their accompanying teacher realizes that the gunman is approaching a second entrance. He darts up and slams himself against the unlocked door, barricading the closed door with his body weight. There is a moment of silence before the gunman shoots a hole through the door, crippling the teacher. Tate pushes the door open, then walks around the library executing the students one by one. After his massacre, Tate returns home. The Los Angeles SWAT team arrives and Constance answers the door. An officer asks her if Tate Langdon lives there, and she confirms that he is her son. The SWAT team enters the Langdon home and heads upstairs, where Tate is waiting on his bed. They target their guns on him, and he mimes putting a gun to his head, and quickly reaches for a gun, but is shot down immediately. In 2011, Violet searches online for information about the Westfield High Massacre and finds the list of victims in Tate's picture as the shooter, frantically searching for her mother. She finds Constance waiting in the kitchen, who has deduced Violet has discovered the truth about Tate and the ghosts, and introduces medium Billy Dean Howard, who is there to help Tate move on, as she isn't aware he's dead. Constance explains that that is why she wanted Tate to see Ben. Constance and Billy Dean want Violet to help them get Tate to move on beyond the end. In order to convince Violet, who is still skeptical of ghosts in general and Billy Dean's abilities, Billy Dean passes on a recollection from Mary, Violet's dead grandmother. Dreaming Vivian rubs her pregnant belly, while a cello plays and strange handprints appear from her womb, giving her pain, waking her up, and causing her to press the panic button. Luke comes to check out the house and deems it safe but mentions that Hayden didn't make it back to the police station. Ben has moved out and is back now for a therapy session in his office, despite Vivian wanting him gone. But they come to a working arrangement. Violet begins to self-harm again and imagines herself cutting her throat. In order to kill herself, 
She sees a vision of Tate, who asks whether she is scared now, and then disappears. Ben's new patient Derek is terrified of urban legends, particularly Piggy Man, a pig butcher from Chicago in 1893, who wore a pig mask while slaughtering them. The pigs tore him apart after an accident, and his former customers were dismembered. He can be conjured by anyone saying, here Piggy Pig, here Piggy Pig Pig into a mirror. Violet enters to talk to Ben, and is beside herself saying that the darkness is eating her up. Ben believes she is talking about the breakup of her parents, but in reality, she is struggling to cope with her newfound knowledge of Tate's actions, his death and the realities of ghosts. As he comforts her, Ben unknowingly calls Violet by Vivian's name. Vivian is looking for Nurse Angie who quit, while Maura cleans Constance enters with a gift of pieces of pork meat, raw organs for Vivian to eat for her pregnancy. Maura, as she prepares the food, tells Vivian that Ben will cheat again. Ben works with Derek again, using a successive approximation in Harmon's bathroom. Derek tries the pig call, and a bloody Gladys appears in the tub, believing she is meant, since she is overweight. Vivian gets an amniocentesis. Violet sees Leah, who has become her friend, at the deserted swimming pool turned unofficial skate park. Leah warns Violet that the devil is real, and talks to her about the Book of Revelation and the Red Dragon. As neither of them is sleeping, Leah offers Violet some of her sleeping pills. Violet goes to the school library and sees the plaque commemorating the massacre victims. A teacher in a powered wheelchair discusses the incident with Violet, who wants to know why Tate did it, and the teacher thinks Tate just wasn't a good person. Vivian tries to fire Moira because there's no money to pay her, but Moira agrees to work for free. Vivian cautiously eats the whole brain raw sent by Constance and discovers she enjoys it. Violet comes home and catches a glimpse of Tate. Following him to the basement, she encounters the ghosts of Troy and Brian, Gladys, Fiona, Dallas, and Charles Montgomery. Terrified, she runs upstairs to her room and finds that Tate has put her iPod on for her and written I love you on her chalkboard, scared and confused about her feelings. Violet attempts to commit suicide by overdosing on the sleeping pills Leah gave her. Tate finds her and drags her to the bathtub, trying to revive her whilst crying, successfully making her throw up some pills. Ben is in session with Derek who has met a woman, but is too scared to pursue her. Ben challenges him to confront his issues. In order to be able to start a relationship, Vivian finds Angie in a church, who has turned to Catholicism after claiming she saw the Antichrist in her womb. Vivian believes the woman is insane. Derek calls the piggy man in his own bathroom and ironically dies when an overweight robber hiding behind the shower curtain believes that Derek is aware of his presence and shoots him in the head. Constance parleys with Billy Dean, who thinks Adelaide is mad at Constance. Constance says she has one last thing to say to Adelaide. Adelaide says through Billy that Constance should have treated her better. Constance apologizes to Adelaide and tells her how proud she was of her and her beauty. Adelaide says she knows and is grateful that Constance didn't get her to the lawn of the old house, but is now afraid of Tate. Back in 1994, Constance wants to talk to Tate, but Tate goes for a hidden gun under his pillow and is riddled with bullets by the SWAT team in response. An officer asks the dying Tate why he did it. Tate tries to say something but dies before he can. Violet had borrowed a book on birds from the school library that Tate took out previously in order to understand him, as the school teacher who got shot had told her that Tate used to read books on birds. As she finds Tate's name on the register, Tate appears and asks her if she's going to tell her parents about the overdose. He confronts her about how distant she is from him now and wants to know if she wants him to leave her alone, admitting he is in love with her and will stand by her decision. Violet calls him to her and they lie down on her bed in the same room in which Tate died. Both exhausted, Episode 6 ends here. Open House is the seventh episode of the first season. Let's get started. In 1994, the phone is off the hook, and Constance is talking to Larry about someone on the other end, who is going to take her child, Bo, and place him in an institution due to child neglect. Constance pleads with Larry, who is in love with her to do as they discussed. Bo in the attic plays ball with Larry, before Larry puts him to bed and smothers him with a pillow. In 2011, Ben and Vivian wait for Dr. Hole's office for the amniocentesis results which showed that she's having perfectly healthy no normal twins. Later on during a scheduled open house, Marcy is showing the house to Joe Eskandarian, who wants to replace the gazebo with a swimming pool. Edmora is bidding whom he sees as the young woman. 
He wants to know what's wrong with the house, and Vivian soft pedals the previous deaths. As Moira shows him around, Vivian and Marcy fight about revealing too much of the house's history to potential buyers. Soon after Joe leaves, Larry arrives for the open house, but Marcy tries to send him away. Larry refuses stating he is an interested buyer, and Marcy pulls a gun on him and threatens to shoot him if he doesn't leave. She rationalizes this with a bizarre racist statement against ethnic men which is rendered even stranger due to Larry being Caucasian. He in turn threatens a lawsuit according to the Americans with Disabilities Act. Vivian breaks the standoff by offering to show him around, but for some reason, Larry seems particularly taken with a fireplace. Sometime after Vivian is in bed fantasizing about Luke, Ben, and the rubber man interchangeably, Violet is back to cutting herself, before Tate intervenes asking her what she thinks she's doing. He licks the blood from her wrists and makes her agree to stop cutting. Later in her room, he asks her about whether she believes in ghosts in the afterlife. He says that he believes in ghosts, and that Violet should she die would move on to a better place. Violet asks why he doesn't believe in the afterlife for himself, and Tate states ever since you got here, this is the better place for me. At a family dinner, Ben and Vivian confront Violet about her depression, as she doesn't want to leave the house and isn't eating. Ben and Vivian confirm that they are definitely selling the house and Violet leaves. Vivian tells Ben about the prospective buyers, including Larry, and that she and Marcy will be taking the murder house tour to find out the rest of the house's story before arguing with him about giving full disclosure to potential buyers about the history of the house. Joe returns claiming he's had a hard time getting the house out of his mind, and Moira gives him a sexually laden tour of the rest of the house while everyone else is away. She leads him to Violet's room and they have a sexual encounter. They then run into Ben in the hallway who is picking up some of his clothes. And Joe reveals his plans to bulldoze the house and convert the land into condominiums with Moira just out of earshot. Larry comes home with groceries to awaiting Ben who confronts him about coming back to the house and that he never went to prison for murdering his family. He was institutionalized instead. Larry says he needs the house to be happy again with her. In 1994, Larry tells Lorraine that he has fallen in love with Constance. He tells her that to avoid problems, she and their daughters should move back with her mother in Ohio, and that he'll always provide them with money and occasionally visit. Larry tells her he plans to move Constance back into the house, and Lorraine leaves the table. When Larry pursues her, he finds a room on fire, with presumably his wife and children inside. In 2011, Ben tells Larry about Joe's plan to demolish the house to Larry's chagrin. The Eternal Darkness tour covers the Nicole Brown Simpson murders in 1994. Before arriving at the murder house, Stan says that he remembers Vivian, and he knows that she is the current owner. In 1926, Charles tells Nora that their son Thaddeus is waiting upstairs in the nursery for her. Nora cautiously goes upstairs to a draped crib, but Thaddeus is across the room. The disturbed Nora comes back down to ask about Thaddeus' resurrection, and laments that the baby is now bloodthirsty stating that she tried to breastfeed her child, but was bitten and clawed instead. She tells her husband she attempted to stab it to death, with a letter opener which unsettles him. To calm him down, Nora tells him she's proud of what he's achieved, which brings him to tears of joy, and as he falls to his knees and hugs Nora, she draws a revolver and shoots him in the head before shooting herself as well. In 2011, Vivian goes back to the doctor for a checkup, and mentions to Dr. Hall that the vitamin B6 isn't helping, as she seems to be getting sick whenever she leaves the house. Dr. Hall suggests maybe that's a sign she needs to stay home and not overexert herself. Vivian asks for additional tests. Constance is in the basement of the house speaking to Larry, who is hiding in the shadows as he sent her red roses. She wants to see his burnt face and is subsequently disgusted by him when he reveals himself. He blames her for what happened to him and fills her in on Joe's plan before she walks away. Violet here chains jangling in the attic and goes to investigate. She is scared of Bo, but Tate tells him to go away. He tells her that she is seeing the ghosts, because she's more evolved now, and that if they scare her, she just has to tell them to go away. He shows her hidden boxes of old photographs, including the Montgomery's, and memorabilia from old house owners that he has found. Maria arrives, but Violet successfully tells her to go away. Constance visits Joe, who thinks she wants him to buy her house as well to enlarge the plot size and they discuss real estate. She wants Joe to show respect for the house, but he rebuffs her and says if she wants the house that badly, she should buy it before kicking her out. Tate is in session with Ben and says he no longer has fantasies and is doing better. 
Ben asks Tate about Violet's state of mind and wants Tate to tell him if there's a problem, especially if Tate suspects that Violet is suicidal. Tate envies Ben as a father, but does not tell them about Violet's recent suicide attempt. Moira is happy that Constance is crying and unhappy for once unaware of the reason. Constance leads to look for Tate, and when she finds him, he is angry with her and he walks away. And she looks for Bo in the attic she has come to say goodbye to him. On her way out, Constance tells Moira that Joe is going to seal Moira's tomb, not unearth her remains, and they agree to unite and take care of the problem. Moira invites Joe over and under the assumption that she is imitating sex, leads him into the basement. She bites off his penis during fellatio, and Larry fixates him with a plastic bag from behind his Constance watches. This earns Moira some respect from Constance, who bids Larry get Joe off the property before he properly dies. Vivian and Violet talk about leaving the house, thinking the property deal is still on. Violet asks how Vivian knew when she was in love with Ben thinking of Tate. Violet shows Vivian the pictures of the Montgomery family, and Vivian is in shock to realize the thing that she has encountered Nora before. Episode 7 ends here. Rubberman is the 8th episode of the first season. Let's get started. In the beginning when Ben and Vivian shifted to the murder house, then Nora comes and sees her house, and gets disappointed. Then there comes a man's voice. Who asks what will make you happy? So Nora says, baby. Then that man takes that rubber suit. We learn about when Vivian and Ben got intimate shortly thereafter Ghost in a black suit had intercourse with Vivian. That black suit guy was none other than Tate itself, because Tate thought that he too would be intimate with Vivian. And as soon as Vivian gives birth to a baby, he will give that baby to Nora's spirit. At present Marcy comes to visit Vivian. Here Vivian tells her that she has seen Nora in the house. But Marcy does not believe her and says that she will be Nora's granddaughter. But Vivian says Nora killed her whole family. Marcy tells Vivian that I have called Mr. Eskandarian a lot, but he is not answering the call. Maybe he too became a ghost, she said jokingly, but she does not know that he is really dead. In 2010, the relationship between Chad Warwick and Patrick was not going well, so Chad goes to the sex toy shop to save their relationship. And there he buys a black rubber suit, which brings some excitement to their relation. Chad goes to Patrick wearing that rubber suit, but he does not like it. There is a fight between them. Chad wants to adopt a baby. The reason for such behavior of Patrick is his unsettled bills, due to which his house will be taken away. And while leaving, Patrick also says that I like leather and not rubber. At present, Nora was crying in the room when Hayden comes there and informs her that Nora is dead and there are too many souls trapped in this house. Nora always misses her baby, so Hayden tells that Vivian is going to have twins. Nora wanted a child of Vivian, and the second child was about to snatch Hayden's soul, because when Hayden was pregnant, Larry had killed her and Ben had buried her in the ground. The thing was that Vivian also had a child of a ghost in his body. That's why he was growing very fast. Hayden and Nora decide that together they will snatch Vivian's children. And that night, Hayden scares Vivian enough just to vent her anger. Back in 2010, when the angry rubber man drowns Chad in the apple bucket, and turns around to find Patrick standing in a cowboy costume. Then a scuffle breaks out between the two, and Tate kills Patrick and brings him to the basement. Where Nora was also present, she asks Tate for her child. Tate says that this couple could not give a baby, so I killed them. Now Nora will get a baby from the new family that will come. Now Nora becomes very happy. Chad was still alive. That's why Tate was going to kill him. But Moira stops him and says that, you killed them with their own gun so that they seem to have committed suicide. At present, the next day Ben receives a complaint from Violet's school that Violet hasn't come to school for two weeks. And Ben asks him its reason, but Violet says that she does not feel like going to that school. So Ben tells Violet to send her to the new school and she agrees. Vivian, on the other hand, experiences very strange things at home. And Moira explains to Vivian, you don't worry, everything will be fine. And the experience you are doing really exits at home. Mora also says that some evil spirit in the house is trying to kill you, so you leave the house immediately. So Vivian picks up Violet at night and packs the bags and decides to leave the house. And as soon as Vivian and Violet sit in the car, the spirits of Dallas and Fiona come into the car. Those who scare them both run away from back in the house out of fear. And then we see Hayden, who was standing at the door of the house, and she was not going to let Vivian leave the house because she and Nora wanted their child. The next day Vivian tells Ben that she sees Dallas and Fiona in the house. But Ben feels that Vivian is saying this because of her pregnancy stress. Ben asks Violet about the previous night, but she denies the ghost story and pretends to be her mom. 
and Ben starts thinking of keeping Vivian in the hospital. That afternoon, Vivian calls Marcy to the house as soon as possible and asks to sell the house. And when Marcy goes to get water, Vivian secretly steals her gun, so that if she sees the spirits again at night, she can attack them and be able to protect herself and it happens at night. Vivian starts seeing spirits in the house, and she also sees a spirit wearing a rubber suit who attacks her, and she also shoots at him, hearing the sound of bullets. Ben, who is still in the same house, enters the room, and Vivian thinks that the ghost in the black rubber suit man came there, and she accidentally shoots at Ben itself, but that bullet hits Ben's hand and he survives. Now Ben starts to think that Vivian is crazy, and that's why he decides to shift Vivian to the hospital, so that she remains safe there. Meanwhile, Hayden comes to Vivian and says that we will take your children. Hearing this, Vivian starts acting crazy. Then Ben immediately gets Vivian shifted to the hospital the same night. Episode 8 ends here. Spooky Little Girl is the ninth episode of the first season. Let's get started. In 1947, we see that the owner of Murder House is a dentist Dr. David Curran, and he treats his patients at home. That day a girl comes to him for a checkup and tells him her name is Elizabeth Short and says that I have been sent here by my girlfriend Nabby Pierce. She is an actress and she will be very famous one day, says so. Due to short money with her, she wants to pay in another way, after which Dr. David makes her unconscious and then raped her, but Elizabeth dies here. And when Dr. David brings her to the basement, he meets Dr. Charles. He cuts off Elizabeth's body and throws it. It means Elizabeth also died in this house and her spirit is also roaming in the house. Then the story comes to the present, where Ben was feeling a lot of regrets. He cheated on Vivian by staying with Hayden. Moira was arranging the bed when Ben comes there. Then Moira starts provoking her and seduces her with her actions. But Ben does not come to her words and says, I love my wife very much. On the other hand, Constance fights with Travis drunk and humiliates him for his work. She gets him a cigarette and asks him to take his dog outside too. Travis sees Hayden's spirit. Hayden takes Travis inside the seduction and they two get intimate. Here Hayden actually wanted to use Travis against Constance because Constance was also against the evil spirits of Murder House. And when Hayden comes to pick up Vivian's baby, Constance won't let that happen. That's why Hayden's plan was to kill Constance through Travis. The next day Detective Jack comes along with Hayden's sister Marla McLean for questioning with Ben because Hayden was missing. They strongly suspect that Ben knows where Hayden is because she will be his child's mother. But as we know Hayden is dead, then suddenly Hayden comes there and handles the whole situation. Ben still feels that Hayden is still alive, and she has come to trouble his family. The next day Elizabeth comes to Murder House to get psychic treatment from Ben, who was killed by Dr. David Curan in 1947. His spirit has come to seek treatment from Ben. Even today she offers herself to Ben as she does not have money. You guys must understand how the spirits of the house were slowly driving crazy the people living there. Ben tells that girl to come the next day. Then he gets a call from Dr. Hall, and the doctor says your wife's twins have different fathers. It's extremely rare, and maybe Vivian has been tortured. Ben was shocked to hear this, as we know that Tate's child was in Vivian's womb. And Mora also tells this to Constance, and she goes and asks Tate's spirit about it, and Tate accepts this. Constance beats him and scolds him a lot, but obviously, a spirit was not going to make any difference. The next day Elizabeth arrives and they seduce Ben along with Moira. But Ben gets infuriated and tells both of them to leave. Then Hayden comes there and talks to Elizabeth. Elizabeth says that it has always been a dream that she become famous. Hayden tells her that you were murdered here and your news remained on the front page for two months. Hearing this, Elizabeth is happy that she finally became famous. Now as soon as Ben learns that the man in the black suit Vivian was talking about, he really does exist and he has done all this. So Ben decides to get Vivian out of the hospital and bring her back to the murder house. Ben later break up with Hayden as well, and Ben still felt that Hayden was alive. Listening to Ben, Hayden gets angry, and she feels that man uses girls like her only to forget his sorrows. That night, Travis meets Hayden again because he is angry with Constance, and Hayden was so angry that she kills Travis, and all the spirits stand behind her, and the Travis himself who is spirit now comes and stands there and starts roaming around in that house. Travis's body is then cut and thrown near the city and Larry does this work. Ben, on the other hand, feels that Luke, his security guard in that black suit was with Vivian, and the second baby in Vivian's womb is Luke's. But Luke did not do this, so he flatly refuses. But Ben didn't even suspect anyone else. Ben tells Moira that he has done a lot of wrong things, 
and he is also regretting it. His wife Vivian will have to bring him home in any case. And Moira also agreed on this point. And Moira appears in front of Ben in her real old form. And she says that you have really changed and now you have started seeing things correctly. And seeing the look of Moira, Ben gets confused as to whose Moira really is. Constance asks Billy Dean what will happen if the ghost's baby is born by a human. Then Billy Dean tells a child born of human and spirit will usher at the end of times. If the devil's going to use a human wound for his spawn, he's going to want a little more bang for his buck. Episode 9 ends here. Smoldering Children is the 10th episode of the first season. Let's get started. In 1994, by now it was revealed that Larry had not killed his family but instead committed suicide. But until now we didn't know how Larry got 70% body burn. So its secret will be revealed in episode 10. Actually when Lorraine committed suicide, since then Larry has been living with Constance, Tate, and Adelaide in their house. But Tate, eccentric from the beginning, didn't like Larry at all, because he considered him to be the murderer of his brother Bo, and he always used to quarrel with him. So one such day, Tate angrily takes Petrol Ken to Larry's office, and tries to kill him by burning him with Petrol. But luckily Larry survives, and since then Larry was half burnt. Then the story comes to the present, Ben apologizes to Vivian and tells her that after listening to Dr. Hall that Vivian's twins have different fathers. I was a little upset and it seemed to me that the second child in your womb is of Luke's. Now I know he is not Luke's child. If you remember what that man in the rubber suit looked like, we will find him together. Vivian gets shocked hearing all these things and says that I did not see that rubber suit man and he was not even talking. I am wondering how he came inside the house and where were you then? How did he get that rubber suit? Ben says I will take you from here in a few days, I promise. Here on the other hand the police find Travis's dead body lying in the park. Detective Granger and Detective Barrios come to Constance to inquire. The police suspect that Travis may have been killed by Constance, but Constance expresses a lot of grief. On the other hand, Peter McCormick, a truant officer for Lost, comes to Murder House because Violet does not attend school. And then he notices that there are a lot of flies in Ben's house. Ben says it seems I have to call the exterminator. Then Ben says I know you have come here because of Violet missing school for a few days. He says yes 16 consecutive days. We tried to contact your wife but did not get any response from her. Any more absences and we are going to be seen in juvenile court. Then Ben meets Violet after the officer leaves and tells her that he will get her admitted to a new school because if she does not go to school she will have to go to juvenile court. On the other hand Constance meets Larry threatens him and he learns that Larry had cut Travis's body and thrown it. But he was killed by some spirit and he was killed in the murder house itself. So now Constance wants to meet Travis's spirit. Larry says he is dead, but I am alive and I still love you. Constance says I never loved you. I endured you for the sake of my family. Here in murder house, Ben and Violet are going out to see the boarding school. But Tate refuses to let Violet go and asks her to spend the whole day with him. Violet stays at home. Ben canceled the plan for that day. So where are the flies coming from in the house he calls to see the exterminator whose name is Phil. On the other hand, Constance is taken to the police station on charges of murder of her former husband Hugo, Maid Moira, and Travis. But in 1983, the police did not find the bodies of Constance's husband Hugo and Maid Moira. Because in the past, Constance had buried Moira's body in the backyard. And by tearing Hugo's corpse, she fed them to the dogs. And the police don't know much that's why they let Constance go. And to see where the flies are coming from in Murder House, Phil goes to the basement where he sees a corpse lying. But Tate arrives there before he can see whose corpse it is. And Tate kills him. And now you guys also remember this corpse thing. Because knowing whose corpse is, you are also going to be shocked. Larry comes into the basement to pick up Travis's clothes and some belongings. Where he meets Travis who was playing with Larry's daughters Margaret and Angela and also takes care of them. There he also meets Lorraine to whom Larry apologizes for his mistakes because now he regretted that he had lost his happy family because of Constance. Another thing Tate learns is that Ben is sending Violet to a boarding school. That's why Tate tries to kill Ben by wearing a black suit. But Ben survives but during the scuffle he also sees Tate's face and he comes to know that the second child in Vivian's womb is Tate's. But Ben didn't know that Tate was a ghost and thought he was alive. Tate tells Violet, I have scared your father, now we will get some time together. You commit suicide by taking sleeping pills and we will always be together. Hearing this, Violet gets very scared and shouts to her dad but he does not see her. And she tries to run outside the house to escape from Tate. But as soon as she crosses the gate, she again suddenly comes into the house. 
Now the secret of how she came back into the house will be revealed now. Tate takes Violet to the place where Phil saw a dead body. And that corpse was not of anyone else, but of Violet herself. Yes friends, Violet was actually dead, and she did not even know it. You guys would think that when Violet died. So you will remember that once Violet consumed many sleeping pills and depression. And Tate even tried to save her by taking her to the bathtub. So friends, actually Violet had died only because of those sleeping pills. And so far we were looking at the spirit of Violet. That is why recently Violet could not go outside the gate of the house. Because now she is imprisoned in the murder house. And from now on she can go out of the house only on Halloween. Knowing all these things, Violet gets very scared. But now she had nothing in her hand. Larry, on the other hand, surrenders himself to murder Constance's boyfriend Travis. So that the police do not suspect Constance and yet Constance did not care about Larry at all. And she was only using Larry. Episode 10 ends here. Episode 11 and Episode 12. Birth is the 11th episode of the first season. Let's get started. In 1984, when Tate was a very young child, and Constance and her entire family lived in the same murder house. Then once while playing, Tate went to the basement. And there he was attacked by the spirit of Thaddeus. Then the spirit of Nora, who died in 1922, helped Tate to escape from that evil spirit. And to pay off that debt, Tate made a relationship with Vivian, so that he can give the baby in Nora's hand. But Tate no longer wants to give that child Nora, because he loves Voilet and does not want to separate her from his brother. Nora says, anyhow, I will take that child. Then in the present, Ben is taking Violet out of the house to meet her mom. And he doesn't know that Violet is a spirit, and she cannot go outside the compound. Ben takes Violet in the car, but Violet returns to the house. Now Ben is not in the house and Vivian is in the hospital. So only ghosts were controlling the house. Those who came to know that Vivian is going to give birth to children early. And those two children were wanted by three people. One is Hayden, the other Nora, the third is the gay couple. And they were going to fight among themselves as to who would take the child. And fourth participant is Constance who is alive. And she also wanted a child because he was Tate's child. So now the three ghosts and a living woman were going to fight for someone else's child. But now Tate has improved and that's why he tries to stop this gay couple but they don't listen. Violet then asks Constance for help to save her brothers. And Constance also agrees to help. She goes on to explain to Chad that you will not be able to raise that child. And meanwhile, Constance tells Chad that she also has one grandchild among those children. That is the child of Tate. Constance says, if you want, you can take another child of Ben, but forget about my grandchild. Chad says, we want both babies. Constance says, you are not suited to raise children. Chad says, no, we will not raise him, but kill him after a year so that he remains a child forever. Constance's friend, Billy Dean, is a paranormal expert. These people take advice from her, but she is unable to tell much. She just tells a trick so that Violet can kill that gay couple. And for this trick, they needed both the couple's things. So Tate goes to Patrick and starts provoking him. Patrick gets in the way and starts hitting Tate. At the same time, he also says something about the relationship with Chad, which makes Chad angry. And meanwhile, Tate takes out Patrick's ring. On the other hand, Vivian and Ben leave the hospital and start coming to murder house. But Vivian still did not want to go inside the house. So as soon as he reaches there, Ben goes to that house to pick up Violet. Violet tries to convince him a lot that she cannot go out of the house. But Ben feels that Violet has done some drugs. Violet gets fed up and says, I am dead. And you take mom from here to keep her safe. Ben doesn't believe her and starts taking her away. But suddenly Vivian's womb starts hurting and she was about to give birth. Then Constance comes there and reluctantly she has to take Vivian to that murder house. Now you must know that a surgeon was the first to die in the house and also a dentist and two nurses. So there was no dearth of Dr. Souls in that house. So the spirits of that house start delivering Vivian. And meanwhile, Ben also comes to know that Violet, that is, his daughter is also dead. And who is there now is actually a spirit. Now both Constance and Ben were also watching Vivian's delivery at home. Vivian's first child, Dr. Charles gives it to Nora and tells her to take the baby somewhere. Meanwhile, Violet tries to exorcise the gay couple the thing's thrown in the chimney, but that doesn't work. Chad tells Violet that he no longer wants a child. He also reveals that Tate has raped Vivian and that the second child is his. Knowing all this, Violet gets very angry. Here, as soon as the second child is born, Constance takes him because he was Tate's son. And once the operation is done, all the spirits disappear. Only Vivian and Ben are present here and poor Vivian is dead because of excessive bleeding. Ben cries a lot now that neither Ben had his wife nor his daughter. 
because both were also dead, and neither did his two children, because one was taken by Nora and the other was taken by Constance. The spirit of Violet breaks the relationship with the spirit of Tate. Vivian and Violet, their spirit comes together, and they cry a lot. Episode 11 ends here. Now comes the last episode, Afterbirth, which will be a lot of fun, and season one will end here. So at the beginning of episode 12, we see Ben who is madly calling Vivian and Violet. Then two months later, Ben goes to Constance's house to get his baby back. But Constance says that of course you should take this child, but do not take it back to that murder house. Because that house has snatched your wife and daughter. That's when Ben's eyes fall on Tate's photo and he understands that Constance is his mother. And it also turns out that Tate is dead. Then Ben takes his child to the murder house. Vivian and Moira's spirits are talking inside the house when Ben comes to the kitchen. And Ben still can't see Vivian and Moira. Ben talks a little with the child and feeds him milk and spends some time with him. But later he has to put him to sleep and give his property, car, office, and all the money to his relative. Leaving it on a note seems to commit suicide. But the first time after death, Vivian stops him by coming in front of Ben. And Violet also comes there. She tells Ben that they don't know where the first child is. But you can save the child you have. And you take him away from here. And after much persuasion, Ben accepts this. And he's just about to leave the house with the child. Then only the spirit of Hayden, Dallas, and Fiona joins forces to put a rope around Ben's neck and hang him. And it is hung in the middle of the house. And finally, Ben is also killed in the same house. Then we will know about what happened to both the children at the end of the video. Then after a few years, the Ramos family comes to live in that house. Husband Miguel, wife Stacy, and their son Gabe. For a while realtor, Marcy shows them the house and the family likes the house. And the Ramos family buy this house. Detective Granger and Detective Barrios come to Constance to inquire. They want to know how Ben died and where is his child. Constance says that I went to meet Ben and Violet at their house. But when I found Ben dead, the first thought I got was to run away. But then I started worrying about that child. And I started searching for Violet, but she had run away with that child. Detectives leave after hearing this answer. But actually, that baby was with Hayden. Then Travis snatches the baby from her and hands it over to Constance. And since then only Constance is taking care of him. After that, as in the beginning, Tate came to visit Violet. This time Violet comes to meet Gabe, the son of the new owner of the house, who claims to be his neighbor. They talk for a while and that boy likes Violet. Tate is watching all this from afar and he is getting very angry. While romancing in the kitchen, Miguel and Stacy say that they should have another baby. Hearing this, Ben and Vivian say that we have to stop them. Then Moira comes and says that there are some good spirits here too who do not wish to harm anyone. So we will help you. That night, the spirits of Ben, Vivian, Moira, and Violet plan to scare the Ramos family out of the house. To save their life, Tate goes to Gabe to kill him and asks him to stay away from Violet. Ben scares Stacy by wearing a rubber suit. Miguel turns on the gas while walking in his sleep and puts his hand over it. Lorraine was doing all this to him. Vivian warns Miguel that there is danger here, get out of here. Then Moira comes and takes him away, where he sees the severed body of Elizabeth who is talking to him. He starts to feel fear. Then Miguel and Stacy come to the basement, where Ben and Vivian scare them a lot. Meantime, Violet comes and rescues Gabe and tells Tate to leave forever. The three of them were too scared, so at the same time, they leave the house and run away. The spirit of Violet, Ben and Vivian is imprisoned at home along with other spirits and thinks that from now on they will not let anyone die in this house. Then we get to know about Vivian's first child who was possessed by Nora's spirit, but Nora is unable to handle it. So Vivian takes her child close and decides to take care of him. And she makes Moira the godmother of that baby. And the second child is with Constance. That is, both the children were also safe, but the story does not end here. This is shown to us at the end of season one. That was the child that Constance had and was Tate's son. He has grown up a bit and has killed Flora, the babysitter of his own house. And that child was actually demonic because he was a child of a spirit. As Billy Dean said, with this episode 12 also completes, Here's also season one of American Horror Story. If you like the explanation, please subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.